Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Uh, I am Renee with the Santa Clarita Birth Center. Um, I hope everybody is staying cool. It is a gazillion degrees here in Santa Clarita. I think it was 108 degrees yesterday. And then, like the valley, just like erupted in fire. So that's how you know it's summer when Santa Clarita is on fire. So hopefully everybody is staying cool, you are staying hydrated, and you're staying out of the fires. I believe that the fires are contained today, so that's always good news. Um, we're going to talk today about what happens after the baby's born. A lot of family members are very concerned when people are having out-of-hospital births. They're like, well, what if, you know, what, what about when the baby's born? What do you mean you go home a few hours after the baby's born? What about all those tests that they do? What about who's watching the baby? What about the doctor? Who's looking and who's doing all those things that they do in the hospital? So we're going to go over what that is. So when a baby is born here or at home, either at the birth center or at your home, we do we do everything except for the hearing test that's done in the hospital. So everything that is done in the hospital is offered to you in the out-of-hospital setting, which means in the hospital when the baby's born, um, the cord is cut and you're breastfeeding, you do that skin to skin, which most hospitals are doing for that, you know, golden hour, that's all terrific. Then the babies are seen, um, somebody comes in and does a newborn assessment, and they give what's called eyes and thighs, which is antibiotic, antibiotic ointment in the baby's eyes, which is erythromycin. In the event you have chlamydia or gonorrhea, we want to protect the baby's eyes if you had a vaginal delivery. If you have one of those STDs, and only those two STDs, by the way, chlamydia and gonorrhea, um, that's why we give babies erythromycin, because if you have one of those or both of those, and the baby comes out of your vagina, the baby can develop blindness due to getting infected with chlamydia or gonorrhea. So in the hospital, standard of care is all babies get eye ointment. Um, and we discuss that in our care, we discuss that at your 36 week appointment, and we culture you for chlamydia or gonorrhea. Um, or end gonorrhea, we culture you for both of them. So we determine whether you are negative or positive. And if you are negative, then we give you the option of declining erythromycin in your baby's eyes due to the fact that you do not have chlamydia. Um, the next thing is thighs, and it's a shot that goes in the baby's leg, and that's called vitamin K. And in the United States, the standard of care is that all babies are given a vitamin K injection in the event they have a rare disease called vitamin K deficiency. And when you come into our care, we discuss all of this stuff throughout your prenatal care. And in our electronic health records, we also upload evidence-based articles on the risk or benefits of doing, in particular, vitamin K prophylaxis. And so we talk prophylaxis means just in case, right? So babies are given a shot of vitamin K just in case they have a disease called vitamin K deficiency. And it is a very rare disease, but if the baby were to have it, it could cause some complications in the baby. So we talk about the risk benefit of giving the baby this injection of vitamin K. So you guys get to decide whether you wanna do it or not. So automatic, all babies are offered erythromycin and vitamin K. Then there's, um, then we do all the regular stuff like they do in the hospital. We're gonna measure your baby, we're gonna weigh your baby, of course, we're doing APGARs. A lot of people ask, you know, what about the APGAR? When is that done? And an APGAR is a visual assessment of your baby at one minute of life and at five minutes of life. And we, of course, automatically do an APGAR as soon as our babies are born. We have a stethoscope and we're listening to your baby's lungs. We're making sure that they're clear. We're getting bilateral breath sounds and that there are no complications. We're also checking your baby's heartbeat and we're listening to all of that. Um, and then we measure little heads and their chest and their length, and we check for a variety of disorders, and we make sure that the baby is perfect in every way. And then um, we would administer any of those protocols if you wanted erythromycin or vitamin K. We do those before you leave the birth center. And then we come to your home 24 to 36 hours after the birth. And at that time, we do some of the testing that is offered or done in the hospital right before your baby's discharged, right? So those of you that have had hospital births, you might remember 
that right before the baby was discharged from the hospital, they did that little heel lance. They cut your baby's heel and they took a blood sample. And that's called the newborn screening test, which we do when we come to your home. We will do that newborn screening test if you would like that test done. And again, we talk about the risk benefit. We do think it's a terrific test. We think um, it can identify super rare disorders. I mean, we know that they're really rare, but we like to test the babies because if your baby were to have one of these really rare diseases, we want to know before your baby is symptomatic. Because by the time the baby's symptomatic with one of these rare diseases, there can already be some serious complications to your baby. So we think it's a really good test to do. It's a screening test. It's highly accurate. I think we've only gotten, I think maybe twice before, historically in our practice, we've gotten some false positives. But it's always best to look at it, review it, and um, make sure your baby doesn't have any of these really rare diseases. So we do the newborn screening, which is this little heel lance. And then we do six circles of blood on this little cardboard thing, and we send it to the state. So we do that at your home. And we also do what's called a CCHD test, which is done in the hospital after 24 hours. And that's called a um, critical cardiac heart defect test. And we do that with our super handy dandy pulse oximeter. And this little um, special little machine here, super highly fancy. And we come to your home. And we put this little probe, this little light, on your baby's hand and on your baby's foot. And this will tell me, when we do it, what your baby's heart rate is at and how well your baby is oxygenating. How well is this? Is the baby getting all the oxygen it needs? It's called a pulse oximeter. And this is a critical cardiac heart defect test machine. And so we bring this to your home, and we do that. And so that's really super awesome. So your babies are getting the same test that they're getting in the hospital. Um, the one test we are not doing in the birth center is because we don't have the right machine, and we're still actually trying to figure out if we can even do this test, is the hearing test, which can't be done until after 24 hours. But um, our local pediatricians will refer you to the right person to go to if you want to do any hearing test for your baby. Um, so that's what we do. And at that home visit, we're also checking on breastfeeding again, because at this point, you've been home with your baby for 24 to 36 hours, and now your baby is starting to show some behavioral things, wanting to really suck a lot, or maybe it hasn't been nursing well up to this point. So we show you how to wake your baby up, how to latch your baby, make sure your baby's getting good feedings in. We talk about how the size of your baby's stomach, so you can have some perspective with how much your baby should be eating, knowing that you're making plenty of colostrum and we go over that and we help you express colostrum so you can see it. So that visit is about an hour, yeah, it's about an hour long at your home. And um, we go over your bleeding and how is your uterus doing. So how is mom doing and how is the baby doing? And in addition, we do these tests on your baby. So for family members, um, friends that are concerned that your baby isn't getting all the stuff that's done in the hospital, we're doing 99% of it. The only thing we're not doing is the hearing test, which is not a critical component within the first few weeks of your baby's life. And if you're being seen by a good pediatrician, they will make the appropriate referrals. They'll also be able to assess hearing. Um, and that's, so like I said, that's not really a critical component. But these other things are critical. We wanna do that newborn screening. We wanna do the critical cardiac heart defect test. We wanna make sure your baby's outputting, so baby's peeing and pooping and that your baby's nursing well. And then we also wanna check mom that she's doing really well and her breasts are doing well and her bleeding is normal, no fevers, no things like that. Um, so yeah, so that's what we cover when we come and do your home visit. So you're not missing out on anything by not having the baby in the hospital. Um, and all of that is done in the comfort of your home. So mom does not have to get in the car and drive anywhere, which is a really, really, really awesome thing. Um, because you are really tired after your baby's been born, and we want you resting, resting, resting. Um, so that's it. So I hope that will answer some questions people have had about um, what we do after the baby's born. And uh, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please uh, call us at the Santa Clarita Birth Center. You can email us, um, follow us on Instagram, and there you have it. 
So thanks for listening to Midwife Monday. I hope you guys come back next week. And if there's anything in particular you would like me to talk about, you can shoot us an email, comment on this here on this Facebook post. Um, follow us and do all those great things. And drink your water. Stay out of the sun. Go to the beach. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.